Work it, make it, do it, makes us. We're at DevOps UK and I'm here talking to Ian from Oracle about, well, we're going to talk about ethics and data science because you're giving a talk about data science, but interestingly, you do a lot of work with the ethics committee. So machine learning becoming, uh, obviously, is, is the hot topic and, and everybody is talking about machine learning and AI. Um, but what about the data? What should we be thinking about as developers when we're designing apps? or systems that take this data? Should we be looking at whether or not we have permission to use the data, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, and the truth is that um, that there is, no, there is no precedent really for the ethical use of data at, at, in, in, in the industry right now. So we sometimes talk about use cases and front, front line, the right balance between the value to consumers and the value to the customer and, and working in the value corridor. If it's too far to one extreme, then and it's not going to make any money. If it's too far to the other extreme, then it's exploitation. Um, so, and uh, interestingly, working with Oxford, the, the traditional barriers to entrance, the guilds that prevented us from doing these things, don't exist anymore. Um, so, if we were to talk about things around cloning, which often seems to be a similar sort of case to machine learning, you know, cloning dinosaurs doesn't seem such a great idea. Cloning stem cells, maybe it's better. The challenge, of course, with this is that those barriers to entrance in terms of the skills and the equipment don't exist. Yeah. You know, the software's out there, the skills are out there. So um, it very much comes down to just trying to back, sort of back the ethical use cases of um, machine learning, AI, and cognitive services in general. So where's the value corridor right? Where does it feel right? Is it not too creepy? Um, all those kind of yeah. difficult conversations to have. So there's no easy answer, but nevertheless, it's an exciting area to be in right now. Do you think that, that, that we eventually will get to a place where we need some kind of regulation? Well, this is the, this is the interesting point, and, and, and the Oxford University feeds into the, into the government on this. The challenge is that whether... Um, the challenge is that whether regulation exists or not, the technology is out there in the first place. You know, my, my, my previous uh, CEO, Satya Nadella, over at Microsoft used to talk about the democratization of AI. Um, and Larry Ellison's long talked about, you know, the use of every technology since the invent invention of fire for, for good and bad. And it could be argued that this is an obfuscation of responsibility from, from the software companies. But the reality is that the stuff's out there in open source anyway, and it's pretty much impossible to, to stop that. So it really comes down to the individual use cases, really, about finding the right uses. But there are some really super ones as well. Um, so, you know, when I was at Microsoft, there's a great example of the Hollands that's being used to uh, by, by, by developer. Uh, he's been, I think, blind since the age of 12. And so he's got a Hollands, and, and it'll do things like profile noises in front of him. So he's coming out the tube. There's a... Uh, a skateboarder coming down on some cobbles, it profiles what, what's happening there. Uh, he uses some of the emotion recognition algorithms there, so when people are talking to him, he can gauge what they're saying. And they're really good, they're, that's it was a safer. The other uh, side of that coin would be, you know, if you've got cameras watching you in Sainsbury's and you're frowning at a banana, that's not such a cool use of this technology. <laughs> um, you know, we're doing some stuff in China around smoke detection on, on, on algorithms, so it looks for sort of, you know, the pixelation of smoke as a, as a fire prevention exercise. So it's about, it's about finding the right uses and really yeah. at the end of the day. And I suppose then it's as well, are you storing data that you shouldn't have as well? Like if you're, if you're doing pixel, pixel detection on smoke, are you also recording small walks through a room and, and clocking that? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. There's a, the, the, one of our applications we've had or, or, or that we've come across is the idea that you can recognize a person from their gait and the way they walk. There are six attributes of, of that um, that are almost as unique as a fingerprint, which means that, that, that you don't necessarily have to recognize the face. But one of the uh, questions that, that, uh, that um, the committee talk about is what if you're able to identify somebody as, as, a, as a diabetes um, person by the way they are what what are the ethical implications of what you do with that data should mm. you inform them should you not so that's for people who are much cleverer than me to solve but we just look at the technology but anyway it's really interesting and, and it's and it's and it's very prescient you know when, when we work with those companies this is front and center so it's, it's a good time to be talking about these things um, so we're talking a lot about data science uh, i've spoken to another speaker here about data scientists and about how he got into it um and you talked about the democratization of machine learning and AI. So what is a data scientist? Well, that's a very good question. And actually, a data scientist doesn't really exist as a, as a single person. Um, 
there's a great consultancy called Mango in the UK who are data scientists. I, I, I used to be a sort of mathematician and statistician before I joined Oracle and Microsoft and before we grew beards and called ourselves data scientists. But that felt like the sweet spot for this, the modeling side of things. Whereas these guys do a profiling exercise where you, you enter a bunch of com questions and then, it, and then it comes up with a profile of what type of data scientist you are. And actually it's a polyglot kind of personality. So yeah, part of it's stats and modeling, but another part is data wrangling, coding, visualization, communication. And, and actually we never, you know, the, the person who's all these things doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, and why that's interesting is because the danger with data science is it becomes massively esoteric. So people like me can get very excited about writing binarizers and scikit learn and doing pandas on Jupiter. And people, and 5% of the room will know what you're talking about and, and care. And then the rest of them will be wondering what the hell you are talking about. Um, whereas actually, the reality is that there's many different entry points to becoming a data scientist and we want this to be much more inclusive. We want the, the role of data science to be inclusive and to, and to open up to more and more people and the, and the opportunities for what you can do with data, for datification to be, you know, it's a hugely exciting point in time. We all recognize that. Um, and there's some great books like, you know, Homo Deus out there from Yevil Harari that, that, are, that talk to what we're doing. But actually, we want to make this inclusive and not just for, for, the, uh, for the esoteric view. <laughs> so anyway, that's our thing about data science. Does so that that's the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Work it, make it, do it, makes us.